mug of builder's tea for the builder. Oh, cheers. Sorry, eyes bigger than stomach. You did the right thing. I didn't think they'd suspend him so quickly. Well, he was bragging about how fast he could operate. I was under the knife. I'd want someone to take the time and not be racing against the clock. I was thinking that they might have found something else. Like what? Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, he was so angry yesterday, Ed. He said it was his word against mine. Well, all I know is you've handed it all over to them above you, so they should sort it out. I hope so. Uh, have a bottle of your finest single malt, please, Dev. Come in up. Now, this little beauty has got a peaty little finish, if you just pardon the pun. Uh, yeah? No, what? No. What are you doing? I know what you're playing now. No. No, Dev, that's it's not for me. Okay, please, do I look like I was born yesterday? No, seriously, I'm buying it as a gift. Listen, how can I say this to you, mate? Okay, I love you. Okay, I love you, man. Okay, but you are a raging alcoholic. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Right, so go, yeah, go, just... go to your meetings, talk to your sponsor, do something. You've had a liver transplant, for goodness sake, man. Oh, yeah. Answering the phones is all he does, okay? Outside of packing Kurt's up is a walking disaster. Just keep your eye on him. All right, bye. Right, listen, I'm going to have to stage an intervention here. Carla, you need to know what this guy is doing. I do. You need to know. No, I, I sent him into the shop to do what he's doing. You see, so you know that he's back on the source. Peter. Single malt. You see? It's a present. It's a present, Deb. He's his consultant. He's just had a checkup. He's doing really well. Actually, I know it's ironic, isn't it, to buy the man who gave you a liver transplant a bottle of booze, but you know. So why didn't you say something? <laughs> I tried to say something. You know what? That guy saved my life and. You love me. Oh, did you tell him you loved him? He did. Nice. He said it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you uh, talk about in your um, support group? Oh, you know, the usual diabetic stuff. Sweets and syringes. The difference between hypos and hypers. And why they pick two words so similar for two things so different. Must be fun. Yeah. It's sort of like a weird little club. We don't get in without a dependency on insulin. Well, you seem better. You think? Yeah. I mean, if it helps, then it's got to be a good thing. But you should know, you've got friends around here who won't judge and would do anything to help you. It's nice to have someone who cares about you. Thank you. Are you busy later? I was wondering if we could uh, go get a coffee in the cafe. Coffee? Yeah, it's a brown drink. Comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes, mostly with Italian names. Yeah, I know what coffee is. Or tea, or hot chocolate, or strawberry milkshake, or fizzy water. Yeah, all right. Yeah, why not? How's lunchtime? About 12.30. See you there. Yeah, see ya. I need to sleep. Eight hours or it affects my hormones. I, I get emotional. Oh, don't get emotional. I can't help it. It's not just the sleep deprivation. It's the horrible animal in pain, grunting and growling. When I dream, I dream of Eileen. When I sing, I sing of Eileen, when I walk. Oh, dear. What's I am? Oh, yes. All night. Yes. Put the fork down, Mary. Why didn't you wake me? I assumed everything was OK. None of us got a wink of sleep. Todd is like death warmed up, which can't be a good look for an undertaker. Well, let's just not make this into a crisis till we've tried out all techniques to solve it, eh? <laughs> oh, hey. Hi. Hey, I bet you're sick of seeing me, aren't you? Oh, we bought Mr Thorne a present. I bet you can't guess what it is. Do you know if he likes whiskey? Well, even if he doesn't, he's going have a surgeon mate who does. Uh, he's, uh, he's not here. Oh, right. Well, is he in theatre? Is he uh, performing another miracle? Mm. Well, not exactly. Can we leave this with you to give to him? Uh, I don't think that's such a good idea. Really? Why not? Uh, look, can we go somewhere a little more private? There's, there's something I think you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're supposed to be revising. I am revising. So who's on the phone, then? Just a mate from the support group. What kind of mate? Cute boy mate. 
His name's Aaron. Oh. Why, oh. He's nice. Just thought you were going for coffee with Daddy. Yeah, I am. OK. Hang on, OK, what does that mean? Nothing. You're just having coffee. Yeah, that's right, because me and Addy are mates. Yeah, mates. Oh, no, has he said something? What, like he'd say something to me? We're just going for a coffee, it's not a date. Does he think it's a date? Oh, please don't tell me he thinks it's a date. Look, honestly, he hasn't said anything to me. But he might. Might say something? Might think it's a date. Looks like your love life just got a little bit more complicated. So, my operation was some kind of a game to him, to be his personal best. Like a... like a race, a, like a private joke. That's what it sounds like. How could it be a race? I mean, I was waiting here for news. It took... took eight hours. No, I checked the records. The operation took less than four hours. God. They contacted you once. Peter was stable in ICU. So he, so he managed to do my operation in record time? It seems so. But, but, but for what? Why? I mean, what, did he win something? Did he win a, a trophy? Did he win a gold medal? What? Oh, no, he's, uh, he's been suspended. Well, good. Good. Because you said something? I think so, yeah. Well, if you like, I can... I can get the manager dealing with this to come and talk to you. Yeah, do that, please. <laughs> on the phone with Mr Geronimo. This is different. The next job is administrator. There's more pressure, more stress. I the admin work. But we just think that you're more value to us on the phone. Just sat here, not going anywhere. Just here, just answering the phone. Can you run me through one more time? Right, you just, you just say, hello, welcome to Underworld. How may I help you? Instantly, you transfer them over to somebody in the sales team. You don't say anything else to them. Under no circumstances do you get into conversation. Is that clear? Hello, uh, this is Underworld. Uh, how, may I how may I help you? I'll put you through to one of our sales teams. Push the button. Hello. You're through to the sales team. You're going to smash it. How can I help you? You checking up on me? That's right. Well, the good news is that I'm up and dressed and it's not even afternoon. And I've not kicked off at anyone all morning. Kevin was in the cafe earlier. He said she hadn't turned up to work. Hence the visit. You still have a job. Consolation prize for losing me son. You've not lost him. He's still his mum and you always will be. Alfie's got his shiny brand new parents and I've got to step back and accept the situation. I worry about you. I worry about a lot of things and I know some of it's daft and in my head but I I know what it feels like to lose people you love. I'm not going to do anything stupid. I'm too tired. Besides, my uh, unpredictable behaviour is getting a bit predictable. Right. Do you fancy going for a walk? A walk? Yeah, a bit of fresh air, sunshine. I thought you liked being pale. I've got sunscreen. It's Manchester. I'll... Buy you an ice cream. I'll get me cold. So exactly when were you going to tell me that my surgeon was playing liver transplant Olympics? We are still establishing the facts of the case. Look, I know how these things work, and I know if you had half the chance, you'd cover this whole thing up. They only found out about it yesterday, so just give them a chance. I saw him two days ago, and he couldn't have been nicer to me. He couldn't have done enough for me. And this and now we know why, don't we? Because he was covering his own back. Because I was his liver transplant personal best. So while I'm fighting for my life, he's having a flutter at the races. I'm afraid there's something else. 
Right. What? We discovered that Mr. Thorne took a selfie, which he subsequently shared with a colleague. What? What kind of selfie? It was in uh, theatre after the operation. The um, image is a bit blurry, but... <laughs> oh. Is that my liver he's holding up? And the caption, anyone for foie gras. I want him struck off. I want him sacked, finished! I can assure you all the events around your surgery will be fully investigated. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. He told me my test results were fine. How can I trust him after that? I want a second opinion. I want a full check. Yeah, what if I end up ill again? What if I end up dead? If he has bodged this operation, I might need another transplant and they might not have another liver this time. Peter, surely, if there was anything wrong, you'd feel it. How do you feel? How do I feel? I feel like I want to punch his lights out. That's how I feel. Yes, I know, but... You know what? If you do need anything doing, you're going to be top of the list after everything he's done. I don't know if I could face going through all that again. Yes, but you... Mm -hmm. Mr. Barlow. Yeah. I've had another consultant go over all your records and she can confirm that uh, all your test results are fine. Right. Your recovery has gone well and your operation was textbook competent. Well, yeah, you say that apart from the selfie and the bet. Um, we are taking this very seriously. The conduct of your surgeon is under investigation. But I hope it's at least of some consolation that you seem to have suffered no adverse health issues. <laughs> and you've not been sitting with him in the last half hour. I mean, he's had some bits. This is mental torture. I'm sorry. I promise you that we will keep you informed about the investigation every step of the way. You know what the thing is? You trust these people, don't you? You put your life in their hands and, what well, they just think it's all just one big joke. You know what? I bought that guy. I bought him a bottle of single malt, and I can tell you what I'd really like to do with that now. C can I, uh, can I give evidence at this inquiry? If you want to. Yes, I, I do want to. Uh, can I suggest you go home now and take a bit of time to think about it? You can give us a statement, or we can interview you, whichever you prefer. Yeah, I need a bit of time. I've got to get my head around all this. Thanks. You need to throw the book at this guy. I love babies. <laughs> I really do, you know. I look at Alfie and I flash back to Asha and Adi. I'm like, boom! <laughs> happy days, happy days. We make the most of them, though, guys, because they go so fast. You're fully intent to. Yeah, once we get over the tiredness. Yeah, but who needs sleep when you've got such beauty and such innocence and that? It's you I'm talking about. Oh, look, he loves me. <laughs> All right, take care of him. He's precious. Mm. After everything we've been through, I'm going to treasure every moment. I thought you'd have gone for a flick. Mm -hmm. Didn't fancy one. How come you didn't get one? Hey. Eh? You okay? Yeah, of course I am. I've got an ice cream with nuts and strawberry sauce. Who could possibly want more? Well, how's about we get going? It's gone very cold all of a sudden. I'm sorry, I can't do this. Yeah, um... Abby! Hi. Uh, hi. I assume the flowers would be a bit too much, but I, I thought they might cheer you up. And Mary assured me that they are a neutral arrangement that carried a message of friendship. Oh, OK. No big deal. Just a few flowers, not very meaningful, not very expensive. Just to say, I'm happy we're friends again. OK, thank you. Welcome. Actually, I remember when you said it was nice to have someone who cared about you. 
and it made me think. Maybe I wanted the flowers to say something more. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I wanted to say something like, we could try again, if you want to. Well, I need to stop you there. Okay. Uh, I've kind of met someone. Kind of? Kind of, I have met someone and I really like him. Okay. No, that's good. Good, good, good for you. I'm sorry. No, no, you you deserve to be happy. You know, uh, this is just bad timing. Bad timing for me. Uh, now, actually, I need to go. Well, you don't have to go. No, I do, really. Uh, you can keep the flowers. It's just, it's just flowers, you know. I'll see you around. Bye. Ah, yes, just the person I wanted to bump into. Did you, by any chance, hear that noise last night? What noise? Well, it sounded like someone was torturing pigs. It was me. Torturing pigs? Is that a sideline, then? No, I was snoring. Yes, I know. You were snoring. The whole world knows you were snoring. I'm really sorry. But we have got some strategies. Strategies? Yeah, we've been trying nose strips. You know, if you made that noise that I heard last night, I don't think nose strips are going to cover it. Have you tried a tarpaulin? It's not my fault. I don't know I'm doing it. Well, I know you're doing it because my windows are rattling. I thought the glass was going to come out the frames. I need to make an appointment at the doctor's. You certainly do. I need to get it sorted. I'm going to do it right now. Hey. Hey. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Somebody had to tell him the truth. Come on. Butterfly wing order marked up, packed and in the van. Oh, you have done well. Yeah, eh? Well, I did have the best teacher. <laughs> so, how's all this work then? Well, most customers call the sales team direct, but for you phone this number. So, you, you just sit by the phone? Pretty much. I've been told not to move, not to engage any of the callers in conversation. Okay. Except every time the phone rings, I panic and forget what to say. See? My mouth's dry and my heart's going like the clappers. Yeah, look, y y you should answer that. If only it were that easy. Hello, Underworld, how can I help? Uh, yeah, of course, we have a full range of luxury lingerie products. Transfer to the sales team. Uh. Well, OK, sir, um, my name is Kirk, and I'm sure I can help. Are you interested in making an order? I can handle anything you need. Push the button. Mm-hmm. We offer a top professional service, and I have to say, our packing and distribution department, well, super efficient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. OK, if, um, if I could just grab a few details... Great. Yeah. Peter, I've just heard about the selfie. Obviously, that's why they uh, suspended him so quickly. I am, I am so sorry you're having to go through this. Hey, no, we wouldn't have known anything at all if you hadn't said something. No, look, it's fine. I, I would much rather know than be kept in the dark, so thanks. At least we found out that the surgery was done properly. Well, the next thing you'll be saying, I should be grateful for having my manky liver held up by a, an arrogant surgeon. Listen, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but Thor's got a reputation. Go on, what kind of reputation? Well, for being full of himself. Look, although, he's also got a reputation for being a flamey good surgeon. Well, I think that's what we should be concentrating on right now. I think we need to go home, don't you? Uh, listen, if I hear anything else, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, hey, listen. Really, I appreciate you. You got the ticket. You OK? Not really. Is there anything I could do, or...? Can you get me a baby? Can you bring him here and let me hold him in my arms? No, there's nothing you can do. I 
I just said you can go. I know what day it was yesterday. And I'll never forget it, and I just... wondered if you wanted to talk or... No more talking. Do you know who I'd like to talk to? Seb. He was good to talk. Let me tell you something daft. <laughs> when I was fighting for Alfie in court and someone paid me solicitor, I thought, that's Seb. <laughs> that's me guiding Angel, helping out his little brother. Didn't work, though, did it? Wasn't Seb. Well, I know it wasn't Seb. It was me. That's nearly five quid for less than two hours. I know. I don't believe it. What? Look, it's Thorne. I'm gonna get an apology from him. No, Peter, don't. Listen, I've don't. got to take the lunch at the Tarrant Square Hotel. Why don't you order us one of their uh, 2010 Burgundy Grand Cru? Sorry to hold up your posh well. lunch and your wine tasting, but I think we need to talk, don't you? I don't think so. Look, I don't want to fight, OK? I don't want to row. Well, that's good, cos I haven't got time for either. All I'm asking for is an apology. Can you stand away from the car, please? No, not until I get an apology. Look, I know exactly what you did, and I think the least I deserve is an apology, don't you? So you better start talking, otherwise I've got another bottle here you might be interested in. Apologise to me. I want an apology. Peter, OK, you've made your point. Let's go. No, not until he apologises. Apologise to me. Well, no, that's out of the question. There was no bet. It's a vendetta, pure and simple, and anyone repeating that slow will regret it. We've seen the pictures. Okay. We've saw the You're selfie. You're playing right into his hands. You know what people like him think of people like us. Let's go. So why don't you listen to your good wife? You're not going to resolve anything by threatening me. Threatening, you see? Come on, Peter. Come on, let's go. Not Look. heard the last of this. I mean it. You've not heard the last of let's this. Let's go. I decided I wanted to put my dad's dirty money to good use. You know, help people. I, I just wish he could have won. The judge has decided that I don't deserve him, and they're right. Mm. I abandoned him. Yeah, but that's when you are using. Well, that makes me sound even worse. You've turned your life around since then. In their eyes, Imran and Toya are a much safer bet. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be good to him, and they'll look after him. But you're his mum, OK? You'll love him more than anything, especially after everything you've been through. That's what Elliot said. <sighs> the thing that bugs me the most is the fact that the judge made the decision based on a lie. What do you mean? Ben... The man that Imran paid to follow me. Oh, yeah, I tried to talk to him about that. Ben stood up in court and told the judge that he saw me buying drugs. But you didn't? No, it was a stitch-up. I was being hassled by this guy called Dean for money, and I agreed to give him some to get him off my back. And, and Ben saw me. So, yeah, money changed hands, but not drugs. What, so they got it wrong? No, he didn't get it wrong, he lied. This isn't right. You've lost your son. And someone needs to know the truth. Well, me using is a slam dunk. As far as the judge is concerned, it proves I can't be trusted. No, Imran wouldn't let something like this happen, OK? He's a good guy. If he knew this was going on, he'd put it right. I'm going to have to tell him. Hi. Did he turn up? That was awful. It wasn't just coffee and a chat. I did warn you. It was a full-on, let's give it another go. Oh. No, it is quite sweet, though. <laughs> no, I thought you were still carrying a torch. Yeah, but I don't want sweet. I want sexy, you know, excitement. Sorry. 
You didn't say that to him, though. No. I let him down gently, obviously. But I did tell him that I met someone else. I think he got the picture pretty quick. <sighs> Do you think I'm a cow? Look, you've moved on, OK? He needs to as well. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I just threw myself at the first lad that I met. No. But I do deserve to have some fun, right? Well, of course you do. OK, I promise Ardy will be fine. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm going to go ring Aaron. You should definitely pursue this with the Health Trust. But in the bigger scheme of things... What? Well, I hate seeing you this upset. I mean, it's not good for you, is it? Just... Move on. So you do think I should be grateful, don't you? I mean, you do think I, I shouldn't rock the boat? No, you can still be furious. It's just that... All I'm saying is... It's one year after your operation, OK? And you're fighting fit. You're healthier than you've ever been and happier, I think, if I'm not fishing for compliments. I am, but that's thanks to you and my family. All right, I suppose he did play a part in that, yes. So try not to make too much of a fuss because... Who knows, you might need one of your other organs replacing. Don't rattle his cage. Carla, this is what I can't stand. The idea that a common cabbie would dare to question the reputation of a public school twit. I'm sorry, but it stinks all that. It does. Well, good luck changing that. No. I think it's that you and me have got many a good years to look forward to. Yeah. OK, that's what I want you to concentrate on. I've got to get to work. Why don't we go for a nice drive at the weekend, eh? To the seaside. You know, there was a time when I, I thought we wouldn't be able to do that again. You fancy that, seaside? Definitely. Definitely, see? All right, that's a good idea, love. And you're right, OK. I do need to look at the bigger picture, you're right. Yes, you do. I love you. I love you. OK. Yeah. Uh. Hi. Hi. You know, I thought for a minute that you'd decided not to hang out with another TOD. Did you put that in your dating profile, like GSOH? No, I just put TN. Total nightmare. <laughs> That's my ex. No, I, I think it's more like GSOL. Gorgeous, smart, out of my league. You seem stressed. I just... I met my ex for a coffee, and then out of the blue, he asked if I wanted to go out with him again. Do you want to? It's awkward. I told him that there's someone else that I like. It's kind of a conversation killer. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I'm just worried that I broke his heart for someone who might not be interested. Well, if this potential someone was me... You? Then... <laughs> it's not It's not you, Aaron. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> of course it's you. Unless you don't want to date someone else from the group. Another TOD. Well, of course I do. You're gorgeous. Uh, he'll be all right, though, I think. How have things gone here this morning? Yeah, good. Well, really good. Amazing, actually. Yeah, the sales team are on fire and the orders are through the roof. Oh, I should take the morning off more often. Well, I say sales team, it's actually one person in particular that's knocked it out of the park. Oh, really? You? Kirk. Kirk. He's not sales. He's admin and he's not doing that because he's answering the phone. He should be handing it over. I know. I nearly fell off my chair when I read the email. Mr Geronimo is not a one-off. You know how long we've been trying to get an order from Danny Mintoff. Danny? A.K.A. Mr No, the Ferminator. Why do you call him that? Because he's hard to negotiate with in a cyborg assassin. <laughs> I saw the Vista baby, he slams the phone down. I think that the last time he ever ordered underwear, or if anyone in Manchester, it probably had whale bones in it. Until today, when our charming, persuasive, intelligent, hard-headed, extra office administrator forced the dam to break. <laughs> I know, I know. But they've ordered 20,000. Oh, no, come on, that can't be right. Look! The email's right here. Mm. 
Henry Thorne. Attended High Hall College near Ambleside, how very nice. A vibrant and progressive school for boys. Looks like Hogwarts. Does it really say that? How can it be progressive if it's a boys only school? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a picture of a student here in one of them daft penguin suits. I'm not kidding. I oh, studied medicine at Cambridge where he was a blue. Of course he was. Various jobs all over the world. Well, he's obviously very talented. And privileged, Dad. He's privileged. You're, you're starting to sound a bit chippy. He is a member of many clubs. Highclough House, Simmons Gate. He is also president of the Sutherland Fellowship. I wonder if Kirk's a member. And what's the Sutherland Fellowship? It's some posh club in town. It says, established 1928 by Sir Tennyson Sutherland. I mean, this is a joke, right? Come on. This is like summing out the 19th century. No, I'm not having it. You, know, you want to remember what Carla said? <clears throat> Look at the bigger picture. This chip on your shoulder is going to do you no favours. Dad, but I don't care that he's privileged. It's the fact that he abuses his power. But where are you going? The only reason that people like him get away with trampling over people like us, because we keep our traps shut. That's why. <sighs> Carla, uh, I thought I'd better let you know Peter's gone haywire. He got himself worked up about Thorne again. Oh. I don't understand. I thought he was calm when I left. Well, he did a bit of research which seemed to rile him. Why? Well, Thorne obviously had a privileged life and he looked like he wanted to start a class war. Mm. Once upon a time, I would have joined him. Is he going back to the hospital to complain? I presume, yeah. He was pretty agitated. Tried to stop him, but he just drove off. OK. Oh, excuse me, sir, have you got a reservation? No, no, just, just give me two minutes. Uh, just give me two minutes. That's all. Was there foie gras on the menu? Uh, no, no, not today, sadly. Uh, I do love it on toast of brioche, though, washed down with a nice gervet stramina. Don't like Hannibal Lecter. Mind you, you're as much of a psycho, aren't you? Who let you in? I knew you were a stuck-up git when I looked at your profile online. Have you told your mate here that you like to have a little bet when you do a transplant? That you like a good laugh at your patient's expense? Does he know that? He, uh, saw the snap I shared with you. Oh. <laughs> it was just a joke. No one came to any harm. You're a former turf accountant. Thought you liked to flutter. What you did, that was a total abuse of power. But that's something you've got plenty of, innit? Power. Shall I tell everybody in here that, shall I? Everybody in the hotel. Ah, oh, come on, I've had enough of this. I've done nothing wrong, now go away. Ah, yes, Kirk. Smashed it. And a massive Roger commission coming your way. Not that you're actually meant to speak to the customers, but you know that Danny Mintoff eats salespeople for breakfast. But you, you've got the gift of the gap. Ah, oh, well, funny you should say that. The thing is... He's a natural. It all just... Trips off his tongue, you know. He he could sell underwear to a nudist. Give over, You're making me blush. I feel bad taking all the credit for your work. I think we should tell the truth. Look, it's my way of saying thank you. You're the only one who gave me the time of day when I started working here. So. Yeah, but you made the sale, not me. You're getting a bit of glory. Yeah, suck it up. Right, go on. Out the horn. Go on. Hello, hello. Oh, I uh, <laughs> I help me. How you doing? Oh, I'm good, thanks. I was being a dad. Wow. Well, it's a good thing that we had a chance to foster a baby before, so we had some idea of what to expect. But this little one, he's got bigger lungs, he sleeps less and poops more, don't oh, you? Oh, oh, that's just too much information. No, I'm I'm just loving getting to know him properly. 
Mm. It's a bit tough on Abby, though, isn't it? How this has all turned out. Look, she had full legal representation, OK? Judges don't make decisions like this lightly. Mm -hmm. It would have been a huge risk to have put him with Abby. Yeah. And she, you know, she still gets to visit him. Abby said that the man that you paid to follow her told the judge that he saw her buying drugs. But she wasn't. That was a lie, you but know. Toya and I are in a much stronger position to actually cater to his needs. No, Imran, the guy's lying to you, OK? Can you just go back and see what he actually saw, please? OK, OK, okay I will. Well, I can't help but thinking that Abby's just clutching at straws. You shouldn't believe everything she says, you know. She wouldn't make this up. The decision's been made, right? Now, what Alfie needs is stability and routine. Can we please change the subject? The toy's on her way. But why? Because she feels bad enough about all this already. She doesn't need it breaking up again. Well, this should get us through another day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly. Hi. Um, I just wanted to see Alfie, so better get going. Oh, bye then. Well, she didn't stick around. Oh, uh, no, no, she had to shoot off. What are you talking about? Another, she just wanted to see how Alfie's doing. So she didn't have a dig at us then? Well, me. No, why would she have a dig? Well, you wanting to be a dad to Alfie's one thing, but I look a bit desperate, don't I? Benefiting from Abby's misfortune. I mean, I'm like a child statue. Hey, but you and me, we are his forever family. Just gonna stand there all day. You're embarrassing yourself. Not no M well. Why don't you just toddle off while you can and we'll forget about it? No, no. You're not just gonna swap me away like a fly, jump in your jag and drive off. I want an apology. Are you threatening me? That this will this will be dealt with through the proper channels. Look at you. You can't even look me in the eye, can you? I'm a patient. This has upset me. Don't you get it? I mean, don't you care? No, I am sorry that you're upset, but I can't apologise for anything when I haven't done anything wrong. Are you questioning my competence? No, I'm questioning your arrogance. I trusted you. You betrayed my trust. I was unconscious. You could have done anything. Is that how you get your kicks? Huh? Having that power over people, knowing that you're untouchable. And if anybody says anything, then, well, you just let them have it with both barrels. I know that's how you treat your colleagues, but not this time. Because I'll tell you what, I'm calling you out. You know, you should think yourself lucky that you've got a brilliant surgeon like me, because I don't have to waste my skills on... On what? Somebody like me? Is that what you're going to say? A drunk? Now we're getting somewhere. What's the problem? This lunatic just arrived and started oh, attacking Henry. Call me a lunatic. Hey, calm Don't down. Don't judge me. I'm arresting you on suspicion Don't. of assault. You do not have to say anything, but it may have to be. He's the one you should be arresting. He's the one you should be arresting. Sorry. You all right? Yeah. Some people. Maybe it's not a good idea for two type 1 diabetics to go out with each other. What if we both have a high port at the same time? <laughs> yeah, but if you meet someone that you really like, Shouldn't stop you from seeing each other. Especially if they're gorgeous. You can stop calling me gorgeous all the time. <clears throat> Sorry. People usually like being paid compliments. Yeah, I know. Sorry, it's just... I've got issues. What kind of issues? Hang-ups about myself. I look on Instagram and some of the models they are gorgeous. So are you. And thin. You're saying you've got body image issues. You know, sorry, I'm, I'm just being nosy. You've only just met me. Let's just talk about something else. I've got an eating disorder. And suddenly I'm, I'm not gorgeous. You are. It's just the stress of revising non-stop. You know, I hate how I look, how I feel. Everything's out of control, and the only way that I can get any control back is to binge and, and purge. I've stopped, but it's not easy. You know, every day is a battle, and 
no one understands what it's like. It's, um, look, I've, um, I've, I've got to be somewhere. Aaron. What? Why'd you keep doing this? You scared the life out of me. Oh, I knew I'd look like Darth Vader. Of course you don't. It's like passing resemblance to a stormtrooper. Oh, shut up. Obi-Wan Kenobi? I'm kidding. Oh, you'd never get seduced by the dark side. I'm more like Darth Vader. I feel a tremor in the force. Oh, this is just a disaster. George. G George, George, look, listen to me, right? You do not look anything like Darth Vader. You look like Darth Vader. Oh, he's trying to cure his snoring. <laughs> I went to see Dr. Gaddas. <laughs> Who was lovely. Oh, she is. She diagnosed sleep apnea, which means the snoring is stopping and starting me breathing. And this little baby, this is a CPAP, and it delivers a steady flow of air. Mm. Very scientific. Yeah. Not very romantic. What are you up to? Nothing. What's all the equipment? <sighs> and to stop me snoring. But it's also going to put the kibosh on any romance I can conjure up. I'm going to fancy my eye with tubes dangling everywhere. George, Die. you're not auditioning Die. for the Chippendales. <sighs> I'll work through any problem we have. Just be honest with me. Thanks for that. And besides, there's nothing more of a turn on than a good night's kip. <laughs> well, come on, then. I am your father. Where you'd got to. I was meeting Aaron from the support group. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you've met him. Must be nice getting some insight from someone in the same boat. You should um, invite him round for tea one night. Look, we're not going out. All right, we're just friends. I don't want you to keep asking about it. All right, all right. Well, then um, I'll keep me neb out. Oh, come on, Peter, where are you? I'm getting worried about you now. Where on earth is he? He's the one you should be investigating, not me. He laughs at his patients, he belittles his staff. Look, if something like that had happened to me, I'd be upset, of course. And I'm sure the hospital trusts are doing everything in the power to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. You can't just attack somebody. The hospital investigation is just going to be a washout. People like him, they're very powerful, and he's got very powerful friends. He's untouchable. If he's broken any laws, he'd be charged. You know, when you turned up at the hotel and he saw you, he started sucking up to you. That's what he's like. Oh, I'm really sorry that I had to drag you into this. He'd just been punched by you, which is why we've no alternative. Oh, come on, man, you can't do this. I'm the victim. No, Mr Thorne is the victim. I'm the victim. We've no alternative but to charge you with assault. Now, if you thought taking on one of them was hard enough, then imagine a the whole team of them. A brand new Beat the Chasers starts Monday to Friday at 9. Well, with the sun out, as the temperature rises, so does the competition. Get ready as brand new The Games kicks off right here next. <laughs>